A lot of you may know Earl Godwin from the show Vikings Valhalla. Here, he is presented to us as a calculating man in the court of Emma of Normandy and Canute the Great. Today, I will be taking you to 11th century England where the Anglo-Saxon dynasty had been pushed aside and Viking kings had taken over. Godwin would use the ongoing chaos to his advantage in order to gain power and this is his story. Godwin was born in the early 11th century, in the year 1001 during the reign of King Ethelred the Unready. Godwin's father was called Walthnoth Sild, the Earl of Sussex, who was a direct descendant in the male line from King Ethelred, the King of Wessex, and the older brother of Alfred the Great. Although the crown had passed Godwin's line over a century earlier, he still had royal blood running through his veins. King Ethelred the Unready would order the construction of a fleet in order to meet a potential Viking invasion. 300 ships assembled at Sandwich in Kent, and Beatric, the brother of Edric Striona, the Elderman of Mercia, brought unknown charges against Wolfnoth before the king unjustly, according to John of Worcester, an English monk and chronicler. Wolfnoth then fled with 20 ships and ravaged the south coast. Beatric followed him with 80 ships, but his fleet was driven ashore by a storm and then burnt by Wolfnoth. After a loss of a third of the fleet, the remaining ships were withdrawn to London and the Vikings could now raid Kent unopposed due to there being no navy. King Ethelred confiscated Wolfnoth's property as a result and by June 1014 he would die. Godwin, however, was an associate of King Ethelred's eldest son, Ethelstan Ethling, the heir apparent, who was described as a warrior prince. Ethelstan would also die in 1014, and he left Godwin an estate at Compton in Sussex. The estate had once belonged to Godwin's late father, and he now had his lands back after his father's disgrace. By 1016, the throne of England was securely in the hands of Canute the Great, after which Godwin's rise to power was swift. By 1020, he had been granted the Earldom of Wessex. He and Canute would even go on an expedition to Denmark. His name was put forward to marry Githa, the daughter of Thorkel Spreglag and the sister of the Danish Earl Ulf, who was also married to Canute's sister Estrid. This marriage would only bring Canute and Godwin closer, thus elevating his position. Godwin and Githa would have many children, notably Swain, Tostig, and Harold Godwinson, named traditionally according to Viking culture, having their father's name as their surname in honour of their mother, Githa. At the time of Canute's death in 1035, a power struggle would quickly ensue between his sons, Harold Harefoot from his first wife, Ave Gifu of Northampton, and Hearthcanute from his second wife, Emma of Normandy. Another contender for the throne would also step forward. Alfred the Etheling, the son of Ethelred the Unready, wished to restore the House of Wessex to the throne of England. Godwin would throw the full weight of his influence behind the claim of Canute's son, Harold Harefoot. However, he would also aid Ethelred's son, Alfred, in 1036, Alfred would leave his exile in Normandy and landed on the coast of Sussex with a Norman mercenary bodyguard and attempted to make his way to London. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle paints a picture of a deceitful Earl Godwin claiming to be loyal to Alfred only to turn on the young prince. It records, As Alfred and his men approached the town of Guildford in Surrey, 30 miles southwest of London, they were met by the powerful Earl Godwin of Wessex, who professed loyalty to the young prince and procured lodgings for him and his men in the town. The next morning, Godwin said to Alfred, I will safely and securely conduct you to London, where the great men of the kingdom are awaiting your coming, that they may rise you to the throne. This he said, in spite of the fact that the throne was already occupied by the son of Canute, Harold Harefoot and he was actually in league with King Harold to lure the young prince to his death. Alfred then gave thanks to God, but at that very moment he was seized and bound together with all his men. 
Alfred was tied to a horse and then sent by boat to the monastery of Eli. As the boat reached land, his eyes were put out. For a while, he was looked after by the monks who were fond of him, but soon after, he died. Godwin stayed loyal to Harold until his death in 1040. He then threw his support behind Hearthcanute, Canute's son by Emma of Normandy. Hearthcanute, however, would only last two years on the throne, and Godwin then changed his allegiance again, supporting Edward the Confessor, despite the crimes he had committed against Edward's brother, Alfred the Etheling. Godwin would further cement his power three years later by marrying his daughter Edith to King Edward in 1045. As King Edward drew advisors, nobles and priests from his mother's country of Normandy, where he had spent over 25 years in exile, Godwin had become the leader of the opposition to the growing Norman influence in England. In one outrage, Eustace II, the Count of Boulogne, had offended the people of Dover by taking free lodgings. A scuffle would develop, in which an Englishman was wounded. He acting in self-defence would kill one of the Normans. The Englishman's house was quickly surrounded by Eustace, and he and his men were all killed along with several inhabitants of the town. The men of Dover then drove the Normans out of the town, and Godwin was sent by the king to punish the people. But he would refuse to follow this order, choosing to support his fellow Saxons against the Normans and defying the king. King Edward the Confessor would see this as a test of power, and he would exile Godwin and his sons from England in September of 1051. Godwin would seek refuge in Flanders, however, he later returned to England the next year with an army. Godwin would not give up his grip on power so easily, and was restored to his position as Earl of Wessex, after he arrived with an army in England the following year. Godwin, however, would soon die after his restoration to the Earldom of Wessex, from a sudden illness after collapsing at a royal banquet in 1053. He was succeeded as Earl of Wessex by his son, Harold Godwinson. Godwin's legacy as a kingmaker continues after his death. His son Harold would succeed Edward the Confessor as King of England. Godwin's ancestors had been kings, and his son Harold Godwinson would make his line kings again, even if his reign was cut short by the Norman conquest in 1066. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.